Every Parenti owner should know what that little whirring sound is just before the car starts. Uh, Brad from KLR Automotive, and today I want to talk about what produces that little whirring sound. Because if you don't have that sound, your Parenti isn't going to start. And so what I want to show you today is what's actually going on inside this stop-start motor underneath your little vinyl bag here. And more importantly, I want to show you some of the common fault diagnosis steps that we take with these. So first of all, here's an old one that we found in the scrap actually that we, we condemned a while ago. We've taken the, uh, the bag off it so I can show you what's going on inside. Now some of you may already recognise the motor here. You commonly see these in window lift mechanisms on uh, electric windows. And essentially we've got a big gear here with a series of switches and this is actually the important part because it's quite clever how they do this. So the first thing you'll notice, there's actually quite a few wires going here, more than just a simple positive and negative that you'd normally see on a uh, window lift motor. That's because what they've cleverly done is using a series of these switch contacts, this assembly controls itself because it actually only moves in half a revolution at a time. So each time we hear that whir, this is actually only moving 180 degrees. Now, this is basically being controlled off the ignition key and that ignition power input is controlling this little relay up on the firewall here. We'll come back to that relay in a little bit more detail shortly, but first I just want to recap just what's going on here to make sure you understand what's happening here. So when you turn the key on, you hear this motor whir, that turns the gearbox 180 degrees, pushes the cable here out to the run position. You drive, you drive, you drive, you turn the key off, this actually whirs again, pulls the cable back in when the gearbox does another 180 degrees and the engine shuts down. And it stays parked in that position with no more power going through it at this stage until you turn the key back on again. So fundamentally, these are actually quite a reliable unit and they will operate for many years without any dramas. However, we do see some fairly common issues with them. First of all, the control cable. This comes out of the bottom of the vinyl bag. It loops around and it's running down here and it actually ends up connecting down to the stop lever on top of the injection pump. So that's where it runs. Now you can see on this cable, we've got a bit of a kink starting here. Now this didn't actually kill this particular cable, but this is a common problem we see where it loops back around. They often kink here and that jams a cable. The other thing we get a little bit of, if you have a close look in there, you can see how it's the, the spring coil that forms the outer sheath of the cable starting to come apart. That's a bit of a problem in the making. But more importantly, if you come and have a look at this end, it's separated off completely and that's allowed water in here and this is actually seized just here. So what's actually happened with this motor is this cable couldn't move and it's actually burnt the motor out before the fuse had a chance to fail. And we actually see that a little bit. We tend to run a 10 amp fuse in there, but we'll often see 15, 30, 20 amp fuses. And I think that's just people putting in whatever they've got, thinking it'll be okay, but don't, don't go above a 10 amp fuse. So we've spoken about the cable. That's a common failure point. These are available as a spare part and it is possible to swap it over. It's a relatively straightforward job. The next thing I want to talk about is the electrical control side of this whole arrangement. It's fundamentally a self-contained harness, which is actually quite good. You've got this, uh, this lead here coming up out of your vinyl bag. It goes to that relay on the firewall. And then you've only got three wires that connect to the rest of the vehicle wiring. So first of all, we have our earth. Very important, no electrical motor work without that. Uh, the blue and red wire here is actually the constant battery power that goes through the fuse that's usually cable tied to the relay. We'll come back to that in a minute. And then lastly, you've got a green wire. This one's actually being cut off when it was taken out of the vehicle. This green wire disappears in behind the dash and that's actually our ignition signal. So that's telling the relay when to turn on and when to turn off. Very, very important. So come and have a closer look at one actually fitted. So this is a relay here that I keep talking about where all the magic actually happens. And what it also means is as far as fault diagnosis goes, this is where most of the action is going to happen. This is where we're going to check our worth, we're going to check our powers, and we're even going to check that relay to work out what exactly is going on. So this fuse is actually an in-service mod, and most of them are a little bit dodgy in the way that they are fitted. So we see all sorts of different fuse holders here. Some of them are done quite well. This one's actually not too bad. And some of you may have noticed it's not actually a waterproof fuse at all. So it's worth having a close look at that, pulling the fuse out, clean it up. If there's any doubt, just put a new fuse in, but then you can get your trusty test light out, which we'll do shortly, and actually check that you've got power across that. Because remembering, that's our blue and red wire going into the bottom of that. So that's 
it's got constant battery power on it all the time. So you should have power across that fuse all the time. So that's check number one. Most of the time when we're diagnosing faults of these stop motors, we're just using a simple test light because really all we're doing is checking for where there is power and where there isn't. You can use a multimeter if you've got one, but to be honest, a test light is quicker and easier. So as you can see, we've actually got power there, so we know that we've got constant battery power coming in. The next thing we're going to check on this is we've actually got ignition power coming in. And to do that, we're going to disconnect the relay itself and We've got the green wire coming in the bottom. We're going to turn the ignition on and make sure we've got ignition power on that terminal. So what we've done now is proven that we have constant battery power going in. We have our switched ignition going in to activate the relay. What that means at this point, if your stop start motor is still not working, it's only one of two things. It's either a relay that's malfunctioned or the stop motor itself has failed. Now, the next thing to do to narrow this down is if you have a look next to your stop start relay, there's usually another relay that looks exactly the same. That one actually controls the warning light for your ignition light, the little red light on the dash. It's the same relay. So you can plug your stop start harness into the warning light relay and see if it works. If it does, then you know you've got a faulty relay. If it doesn't work, then you can almost guarantee you've got a faulty stop motor. One last thing I want to talk about, remember this stop lever on top of the injection pump I mentioned earlier? If you have a failure on this system in the middle of nowhere, the easiest way to get yourself home, unhook the cable off that stop lever, it will spring back to the run position. You can now start your Parenti and you can drive forever like that if you need to. And when you get to where you're going, you've just got to open the bonnet, pull that lever across into the stop position and hold it there until the engine stops, turn your ignition off and that's it. And that will actually get you home. Of course, we have all these parts available on our website, klr.com.au, and I do hope this information is going to help you on the side of the road one day.